Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Manira, the CEO and founder of Hizmet Ventures. I am also the niche navigator and I help coaches and people find their niche and then markets to it. I have with me here is uh, Candice and she is a good friend of mine. We hang out a bit <laughs> and I want you to tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you, Manira. It's great to do this with you. We had so much fun the other day just talking about all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's fun now to be able to, first of all, I want to honor you for what you're doing and how you are supporting the transition in our whole world with just getting the word out about different ways people can uplift who they are, begin to touch and touch touch in and experience how they already are this magnificent being and how to feel that. So first of all, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up because I do this because I felt that there's so many people out there who are doing so many wonderful things and some of them have their own businesses in doing what they're doing, but they're not promoting themselves enough. And when I, came across a few of them, I said, you know what, I need to expose them and promote them in my own way. And so I have met, met, I have met so many people and I have fostered many, many good relationships and I have made long, lifelong friends in this. Not only that, but the thing is that the word is getting out that I'm doing a lot of interviews. So people are coming to me and say, would you interview me? Because, Fabulous. That's and wonderful. it's promoting their business, right? So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yes, it's important because the more we support each other and network, the more people will have an opportunity to learn about new um, ideas, new approaches, new perspectives, because we can walk around in our own little box and not be aware of all these opportunities that we have available. Yeah. So that, uh, that's important. Thank you. So I'm Candace Stewart Finley. I'm the founder of Empowered Whole Being Foundation, which and the title I use for myself is Transformation Facilitator. Okay. I, so we are coaching the kind of people that, the type of uh, individuals that I tend to gravitate or energetically connect with are those who are ready to take ownership of what they're creating. They may not understand how they're creating it, but they're ready to create something differently. They may want to create more experiences of feeling good as opposed to feeling bad. Yes. And, and you're right, because you talked about the other day when we had this conversation, you talked about the power of the law of attraction. And that, I think that's where I think this conversation would, should go, because um, maybe you should enlighten us with that. Because, you know, we talk about the power of attraction and everybody else has heard about this, but nobody actually knows how to attract <laughs> so. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and first, let's just, let's just change the vernacular a little bit. Let's call it what it really is, the law of creation. Okay. It's not attracting. That's very passive. And it's not taking ownership. It's creation because we are the creators. And I'll explain how that works. First of all, it's interesting to me that, and I did this myself as well, before I learned all of this and studied quantum physics for the last 10 years, I was approaching physical world challenges and issues that were around feelings from the context and perspective of the physical world. Feelings are frequencies. You can equate them exactly, one to one. Feelings equal frequencies. And we are frequencies of electromagnetic energy. Trying to resolve or shift a frequency, aka feeling, 
through our five senses is not going to work. You can't touch a feeling, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, none of those. You can't see it. The five senses are not applicable to feeling frequencies. And yet that's the very key for creating your life differently, okay. is understanding what we're feeling. Now, I know that most of the time it's unconscious until that individual begins to understand how to tap into that unconscious awareness, bring it to the surface of their consciousness would be a better way to say that. So, but until that happens, according to the research, especially of one individual, uh, he's a biophysicist, which is, this, I call them quantum biologists, because when I say biophysicist, many people don't understand what that is, but it's the study of the quantum world of biology. Huh. And Dr. Bruce Lipton states in his, from his research that he would say about 95% of what we're feeling equate to frequency transmission is unconscious. So that means if we're doing affirmations and all of these positive, trying to think positive thoughts, but we're transmitting feelings of unworthiness and guilt and shame and blame and fear 95% of the time, well, you know, the, <laughs> the equation there, it's going to counteract, it's going to neutralize whatever you're thinking. So being aware of what you're transmitting through your feelings is the first step to really understanding how to engage in the law of creation consciously. Because we're creating 24-7 anyway. It's just... 95% of it is mostly unconscious. So therefore, we create experiences that seem like we're being slammed from left field. We don't, we'll ignore the phone. <laughs> so anyway, um, congratulations to Manera because she is an, a new grandmother. Thank you. Another new addition to the family. Thank you. Yes, my grandson is just 14 days old, but so I'm here helping my daughter and with a lot of uh, background noise, so excuse that. It's okay. It's no worries. No worries at all. So anyway, though, getting back to that thought, we're, 20, we're creating 24-7 anyway. It's just mostly unconsciously. And that's why when we talk about the law of attraction, thinking that, oh, if I just think good thoughts or if I just, you know, try to feel gratitude um, consciously, but we haven't addressed and, oh, took and taken ownership of what we're feeling and transmitting unconsciously, it's like we're spinning wheels. We get no traction at all. So it's not about attracting something like, oh, if I just am really a good person, then good things will happen to me. It's law of creation. I am a creator. This is how you would say it differently. I am the creator of all things, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And yeah, sometimes it's pretty uncomfortable, but that just shows you what we're transmitting unconsciously. It's If we reframe that, those experiences that are that invoke a bad feeling or uncomfortable feeling. If we reframe that and take it out of the world in context of judgment, of things being good or bad, and instead look at it as just straight on data. You're getting all kinds of data information being fed to us from our unconsciousness, our unconscious awareness. And you, if you don't, if someone is not clear on what they're primarily transmitting, then just step back and observe the, the um, events and transactions that you're having on a daily basis in the so-called external world. 
because that's an illusion too, the illusion of separation. I'll get into that in a second. So if, if you step back and just say, wow, it seems like people are really cutting me off in traffic or, you know, they're frowning at me. That would tell me that I've been feeling more un unworthy energy. I've been feeling more feelings of fear of being held back. And that not take it as, uh, and, and not personalize that and say, oh, that's who I am. No, no. Look at it and go with, with impersonal observation that it's not who we are. And instead go, oh, that's interesting. So I must be transmitting that unconsciously. And I would rather choose something different. You know, Louise, you know who Louise Hay is? I do not. Oh, she's since passed over. Um, she wrote books about and did research in the association between the feelings we're feeling, aka emotions, and what physical imbalances are created from them. So for instance, um, I have the app on my phone. Um, we can play a little exercise here. Is there something that you've been experiencing, Minera, that has been, uh, you know, problematic with your physical health? Yes. Would you mind sharing what that is, if it's not too personal? <laughs> <laughs> My back hurts a lot. Okay, whereabouts in your back? Lower back. Okay, so in the lower back, depending on the vertebrae, it can, it, it um, has emotional association, unconscious of course, with not feeling supported and um, worries about concerns when that, and, and, and some of the vertebrae and the not being supported has to do with lack as well. So when we are feeling those feelings on a quantum biological level, what we're doing is we're interfering with our body's natural harmony to, to function in, in a place of wellness. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. So the law of creation is really the true um, universal law as opposed to attraction. And there is, a, there is quantum uh, biological information in, 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 um, to back that up. Should I jump a little bit into why that is? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go too deep because um, the reason why I get so excited about quantum physics and quantum biology is because coming into this incarnation, this, this person I am today, um, came in with already built into the program is what I call that the program um, having a lot of awareness of frequencies and energy some people call that being a psychic or an empath it's just you know labels or whatever it doesn't really mean anything other than the fact that uh, my program for this particular incarnation was designed to be more aware of those things it's Everybody is that already. Everybody is an empath. Everybody is psychic in, in those terms, but not everybody is tuning into it. Not everybody is stopping and stepping back from their physical identity long enough to understand and learn how to read the, the uh, subtle energies that are happening. But this brings us back to the point of of creating a, a life with good energy and good feelings and, and joyful experiences, it brings us back to ownership of what we're transmitting and feeling. And so, okay, so all of the things that we are, we create. So we are not talking about the law of creation as in the God's law. We're talking about what affects us. So, like you said, somebody cutting me off on a, on a traffic, uh, you know, a stop sign or something like that in traffic and, you know, somebody saying something to me at a grocery store, it's that, you know, and it, usually now that you're talking about it, I'm thinking it's that particular day when all the ne negatives are happening to me. 
So what you're saying is that I am creating that aura or that feeling. You're transmitting it right into the quantum creator field in first. So think of it this, it's transmission first or feeling first, albeit unconscious, creation second. Okay, so yeah, so what I, what I give out is what I'm getting back. Exactly. So giving out is transmitting and then creating is what I'm getting back. What you're receiving, right. Okay, so I understand kind of. <laughs> so what does that have to do with my pain? With your pain in your lower back? Yes. There's unconscious blocking beliefs. This is my terminology. Unconscious blocking beliefs around the um, fear of not enough support which can come in all forms financial emotional physical whatever it might be but it's support and that also can can relate to not really feeling supported by a higher consciousness like we talk we have this intellectual relationship with god but when it really boils down to what I have found in my work is that when it really boils down to that individual's relationship, there is unconsciously this constant fear of, is it real? Is that real? Wanting to test it, is it real? And that, that fear is then what disrupts that flow of connection. Now, I don't call it God, I call it you know, quantum consciousness or divine consciousness, source, it doesn't matter. It's, we're all interconnected. And that brings us to the reality of the quantum rule of entanglement. This is really important. Entanglement in quantum physics means the same thing in metaphysics as interconnectedness or everything is everything. It's the same exact reality. Two sides of the same coin, so to speak. Okay, I get it. But yeah. So, so how did you get into all of this? Again, like I said, I've been, ever since the beginning of this particular life experience, I have been very tuned into energy, very aware, very empathic. And... I also, again, through my research and work, I have come to believe that we have an unconscious program and that we're doing unconsciously, we're cycling through this program, researching a whole gamut of um, emotional reactions and experiences. And then for those physical individuals who in their program are meant to wake up the, to the fact that they're more than their physical self and shift from researching all of these experiences to releasing the energy of them. All the doubt, all the unworthiness, all the fear type energy. I call that release, a release life. Okay. Okay, and so I see it as being built into the program like a switch. And when I've, I've interviewed several people with what I call um, an infinity experience where they've, some people it's incremental, some people it's boom, where they feel the feeling, they get this sense that I don't know how it is, but I just know I am more than this physical body. There's something more going on. I'm connected to something bigger than that. Mm. That's when that, I call that the switch being flipped. Like I said, for some people it's incremental, little bit, little bit, then boom, they go, whoa, there's more going on here. And then for some people it's just bam, it's right away. <laughs> they just know. And you know. This is a subject that, that requires a lot of attention and a lot of, um, I wanna say, um, discipline to understand because it's not like any other coach. You're a very specialized coach that teaches a very, I want to say, a, on an upper level <laughs> than most people are. Well, yeah, because I'm looking to um, create results 
to facilitate results for the individuals that are seeking a deeper understanding of how they create. And in order for that to happen, they, those individuals that I work with are ready to take ownership. Yes. And yes, we can work on a more peripheral level. And you're not going to get necessarily the same results, but you'll get, it will help. For those individuals that are ready to go deep, then they can completely transform their life experience. I've seen it happen over and over. It's been my experience as well. You know, this is so profound. It is profound. And you know, when we had our first talk the other day, it just left me, you know, breathless, if you will. And I felt a little bit overwhelmed because this is a subject that is so new to me. Mm -hmm. But it's fascinating because, you know, we hear about the law of attraction and, you know, the, the movie The Secret also talks about it is that you have to manifest those thoughts to have it come back to you, like you said. But the fact is that people don't know how to do it and they have to start thinking and create and you know, feel it and then create feeling feeling because that's the challenge people are up here and it that's not going to change anything it let's yeah. just, and i'll explain why i think this is important to include this um our our heart is the primary transmitter of electromagnetic frequencies okay or feelings whatever you want to call it okay it has 40 million neurons it's also the switch for the autonomic system between stress mode and restorative healing mode. And that switch is controlled by how we feel. So if we're feeling mostly fearful, you know, unconsciously maybe, then that keeps triggering that switch to keep us in stress mode. And when we're in stress mode, there's a whole cascade of things that happen. One that's important for people who are looking to improve and, and um, you know, find success, whatever that means to them, I like to call it holistic prosperity, is when we're in stress mode, the prefrontal cortex is completely bypassed. It actually stops, if we're in stress long enough, less neurons grow there. And instead, the amygdala, which is back here, that controls and activates the whole autonomic stress response, that gets more neurons. But that's all reversible depending on when, if we shift our feeling focus. So keep in mind, the heart is the primary transmitter. The next piece of information, quantum biological uh, function, that's so important is what's called the belly brain or second brain. It's the enteric nervous system, the whole gut. That has over a hundred million neurons and it stores 95% of the serotonin. Serotonin does a lot of things in the body. The belly brain is in charge of dispersing the serotonin. So if people aren't able to sleep well at night deeply, it's because they're in stress mode, which prevents the belly brain from dispersing serotonin to the pineal up here in the head and the pineals one of its jobs is to convert serotonin to melatonin you've heard of melatonin right yeah okay so if we're in stress mode forget being able to drop into a deep sleep because we're preventing our belly brain from functioning one of its main functions for deep sleep hmm. so the belly brain also has another important job on a quantum biological frequency you know feeling type exchange it controls what i call the brain antenna there are several structures in our head tissue and bone and so forth that transmit frequencies via sound light color smell they're they're breaking down all that information and they're transmitting it to the pineal gland. And the pineal gland contains inside of it 
microscopic calcite crystals. And calcite crystal has two main properties. One, it magnifies all that frequency data information being funneled to it. And then two, multi-directionally disperses it. This is part of how we are constantly transmitting and receiving feeling frequency information. This is how entanglement works as well. Nice. Everything is interconnected. We're just not aware of it for most part until we become willing to take ownership. So the belly brain, if it's mainly fe feeling, you know, fear-based frequencies come in because heart's the transmitter, the belly brain's the receiver of these frequency feeling bandwidths, okay? And if it's mainly fearful um, coming in there, it's going to keep the brain antenna attuned to the TV station of our worst fears. Ah. The thoughts and images are going to pop into our awareness are all the times we fell flat, all the times we failed. However, if we're primarily transmitting and receiving the joy bandwidth, you know, love, gratitude, aligning our, our, our feeling experience with those kinds of feelings of awe and wonderment. You know, when you see something in nature that's so amazingly beautiful, you just feel like, wow, this is just creation in its finest, and I'm somehow, some way, I'm part of that. When we tune in and allow that alignment to those feeling frequencies, then this brain antenna is tuned to this TV station that's the direct link to our higher consciousness, our higher wisdom. That's awesome. Yes. I, I'm simplifying it, but basically that's it. No, and that makes a lot of sense, the simplification, because, you know, the terminology is simple, mm -hmm. and it sense. Does make sense. Yeah. So the I made that energy shifting uh, audio file, the MP3. I made that specifically to give to people so they could experience what it felt like to shift their energy alignment, their feeling alignment, to consciously shift it to being primarily aligned with the love, joy, compassion, gratitude type of frequencies, transmitting from the heart and receiving in the belly. So they can have something to compare because people walk around, myself included before, mostly aligned with fear frequencies, either judgment, you know, unworthiness. It's all fear based, you know, that's the root. Didn't know it until I experienced not being aligned with it, then I knew I had a choice. So that's available for free uh, as a download. And there's information there about the, a little bit about the science behind it and how to do it. And um, it's only a 17 minute audio file. The first six minutes is a short introduction from me and then guiding, doing the visualization. And then there's a nine minute segment of just the music. And in that music, I have laid a bass track of the 963 Hertz solfeggio tone, which is purported to help support connection to your expanded self, your higher wisdom. So yes. that's I, I heard that and I was, uh... I don't know what I'm supposed to expect out of it, but I heard it and I thought, okay, that's all I said. Okay. <laughs> so maybe now that I have a better explanation, I'm going to listen to it again with a different ear and not be, you know, and not expect a lot of things, but it's going to help me. Just and when you, good. And when you do listen to it, Manura, make sure you're listening to it with headphones like from a, a, like a smartphone or a, a tablet or iPad or something. So you can, not from the computer speakers, but where you can also, um, if you're laying down when you're listening to it, 
um, put something over your eyes, a little washcloth or an eye pillow or something. And if you're sitting up to do it, uh, which is how I meditate sitting up, um, or meditation is the same thing as shifting your frequency alignment. I use an, um, a sleep mask kind of a thing, or you can tie a scarf around your head, it doesn't matter. Just so you, we can, you get the most benefit from it by separating from the third world, uh, the physical world around you. You know what I mean? Like being more immersed in the experience of it. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was awesome. And I love hearing you, although I am still gaining a more, um, you know, awareness into this, this new phase of my life. So yeah. I'm, you know, and I'm going it, to, it's intentional and it's, you know, I'm learning about it, but it's going to take a moment. A moment. I don't expect overnight things. Exactly. Because we're talking about completely fi uh, flipping the construct. Yes. And um, maybe it will be helpful to also, if you want to um, purchase my book, it's called Spiritual Transformation Simplified and it's available all the regular places, you know, Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all of that. It's, it's not that expensive. I think it's fifteen ninety nine, whatever. And um, but that will go through, and at your own pace, you can read this information. And I always it has exercises in it too, but I always encourage people to not do any exercises until they've read the book through at least twice like one time all the way and then maybe the second time you're going to read areas that maybe the first time were not quite sinking and not quite quite connecting but then then it makes more sense then you then it's going to fall into place a little more okay wonderful thank you so much thank I you Manura. i really appreciate what you're doing again thank you thank you and um if i have any questions i'll reach out for those please people do. please do yeah, and we'll send out uh, your uh, website and your contact information to people. And for those people who are watching, they can like, subscribe, and share this video. That would be awesome. Thank you so much again, Candice. And I really you appreciate it. it. And I will, you know, we'll have another talk soon because once I get to a different phase, I'm going to have to knock on your door and say, now what do I do? <laughs> Perfect. Love to support you. Wonderful. Help thank you. In you. Any way. Help you in any way. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you so much. You too. Enjoy yeah. your baby, your grandbaby. Thank you. I will. <laughs>